The Donkey and the Dobie. There lived a cunning Dobie in a village who owned a donkey. Every day, the Dobie carried heavy loads of clothes on the donkey's back to a far-off lake to wash. On the way to the lake, they had to cross a jungle. So every day, the Dobie used to leave early in the morning and return home before dark. The poor donkey got very little to eat after serving his master. As a result, it grew weaker and weaker. The Dobie, too, knew this. One day, as they were returning home after the day's work, the Dobie found a dead tiger near the jungle. Immediately, he was struck with an idea. He removed the skin of the tiger and brought it home. That night, the Dobie put the tiger skin around the donkey and let him loose in the neighbor's barley field. The donkey ate to his heart's content. This went on for days. As the days passed, the donkey grew fat and healthy. The Dobie, too, was very happy as his plan had worked. The farmer, on the other hand, noticed the disguised donkey in his barley field, but he mistook it to be a tiger and was scared to attack it. One night, while the donkey was busy eating in the barley fields, he heard a female donkey braying at a distance. He became so excited that he couldn't help braying back. After hearing the braying of the donkey, the farmer came out to his field. He understood that he had been fooled by his neighbor. He tied the donkey in his backyard, and from that day on, he was the donkey's master. The greedy Dobie, after losing his donkey, realized the mistake. There is sufficiency in the world for man's need, but not for man's greed. Long ago, on the banks of River Yamuna, lived a clever monkey. A crooked crocodile that lived in the river watched the monkey eating juicy fruits. One day she said to her husband, That monkey eats juicy fruits from all the trees. I'm sure his heart will be just as juicy to eat. Can you get me his heart? He lives on the trees and I can't climb, replied the husband. Stupid! Why don't you ever do things on your own? The crocodile said. Now listen to me carefully, for I have a plan. After the plan was discussed, the crocodile went to the monkey and said, <clears throat> Hello there. Um, can you throw me some of those juicy fruits? Here, take these. The monkey threw some fruits. The crocodile ate the fruits and said, these are not as sweet as the ones on the other side of the river. I think they are the sweetest. Is it so? The monkey asked, looking at the other side of the river. I would like to go there, but I can neither jump nor swim. To this, the cunning crocodile replied, Don't worry about it. I can help you cross the river. Hop on to my back. The monkey was all excited and jumped onto the crocodile's back. When they reached the middle of the river, the crocodile began to swim lower and lower into the water. The worried monkey screamed, Why are you swimming so low? My dear friend, I am taking you to my wife. She would like to taste your heart. Immediately, the monkey laughed out loud. <laughs> I've left my heart back home on the tree. If you had told me earlier, I would have gladly given it to you. The crocodile was confused and agreed to take the monkey back to the tree. As soon as the crocodile came close to the bank, the monkey jumped off the crocodile's back and ran up the tree to safety. <laughs> Presence of mind pays well. 
Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful parrot on top of a tall tree. She had two little babies that looked exactly similar. Once, when the mother parrot went out looking for food, a hunter climbed up the parrot's nest and seized the chicks. While putting them into his bag, one of them managed to escape, and the hunter took the other home. A hermit, who was walking by, saw the parrot that managed to fly away and carried him to his ashram. Thus grew up the little chicks, one with the hunter and the other with the holy hermit. One day, a great king was riding through the forest, and he happened to see the hunter's house. Suddenly, he heard someone screaming. Here is the man coming to our house, master. Catch your bow and arrow and kill him quick. Soon, he realized that it was a parrot in the cage. What a nasty bird! He rode away without looking back and came across a hermitage. He stopped there for a drink of water. There, he also saw a parrot in the cage. He thought, "Not another rude and mean parrot!" But to his great surprise, the bird began to sing. Welcome, welcome, O、oh、mighty king! The king was astonished to find a parrot looking similar to the one he saw at the hunter's house, but gentle and kind. He went to the cage and said, "I just saw a parrot looking like you, but mean and nasty." Was he living with the hunter? Asked the parrot. "Yes, yes, he was," replied the king, with tears dripping down. The parrot said, "He is my beloved brother. Once, when our mother was away, a hunter seized us. I managed to escape, but the hunter took my brother. His master is mean, and his company would have shaped his nature. But my master is different. Being in good company makes all the difference." The snake and the crows. <laughs> Once upon a time, a pair of crows lived on the banyan tree. A huge snake that was looking for a shelter found a hole beneath the same tree. Having a snake as a new neighbor rid the crows. They discussed the matter with some of their friends. They warned them to be careful, for the evil snake would eat all their children. The she crow cried in grief. How can I lay my eggs if the snake will eat all my babies? We must find another safe place. He crow consoled his wife and said, "Let's not leave our home. We will drive the snake away." Soon, the mother crow laid three eggs. There came out three <coughs> little baby crows. The snake in their neighborhood was greatly delighted to hear the noisy tripping of the young ones. One day, when the crows had gone out, the greedy snake slowly moved towards their nest. He ate all the baby crows. When the parent crows returned, they were shocked to see their empty nest. Mother crow burst into tears. Father crow said, "Don't get upset, dear. I will teach him a lesson." <coughs> Father crow sought the advice of a wise old fox. The fox suggested an idea: fly to the river bank where the queen would be bathing, pick up her diamond necklace, and put it in the <coughs> snake's hole. The father crow picked up the necklace as he was advised. <coughs> Seeing a crow flying with a queen's necklace, the guard came running. They chased the crow and saw the necklace drop into the snake's hole. As they tried to take out the necklace with a stick, the confused snake came out hissing. 
finding the guards with their weapons, the snake was frightened. He left the place never to return. Shrewd thinking and clever planning would help us in times of danger. Big Lion and the Little Rabbit Once upon a time there lived a big lion in the jungle. Every day he used to kill the animals to satisfy his hunger. One day, all the animals went to the lion to find a solution to this problem. When the lion saw all the animals together, he was very happy. Hmm, today I don't have to take the trouble to hunt. One of the animals explained to the lion, Sir, you are the king of the jungle, and all the other animals are your subjects. If you keep killing all of them, there will be no one to rule over. If you stay at home, each day an animal would surrender itself as food for you. The lion happily agreed to this offer and warned, If you fail to send me an animal, I will kill all of you. Each day an animal was sent to the lion. One day it was the turn of a little rabbit. He thought of a plan to save himself and all the other animals. The rabbit slowly went to the lion. The lion was furious when he saw a little rabbit. He roared, Hmm, such a small animal for my food. I will kill all of them at once. The rabbit said in a troubling voice, Sir, six of us were sent to you, but alas, five were killed and eaten by another big lion. The lion roared in anger and said, What? Another big lion? Sir, the other lion has called your majesty a cheat. He challenged you to prove your strength, said the scared rabbit. Take me to him immediately, shouted the lion. The rabbit led the lion to a well and told him that his enemy was in there. The lion looked into the well and saw his own reflection. He roared and jumped into the well to attack his enemy. The foolish lion met with his tragic end. Wisdom wins where mind fails. Golu and Molu were very good friends. Golu was a very timid boy, but Molu was generally brave. One day, the two of them decided to go to the fair happening in the nearby village. But Molu, we have to cross the forest to reach the village. Aren't you scared? Asked Golu. Oh, Golu, cheer up. Nothing will happen. All animals in the forest are my friends. Now come with me. <laughs> Joked Molu. Soon they reached the jungle. Though Golu came along, he was still very scared. The sounds of the jungle added to his fears. Molu kept singing and cheering him up as they walked. In some time, they heard a grunting sound behind them. Now even the brave Molu started trembling with fear. What was that? Asked Golu. It's bear replied Molu. As he spoke, he glanced around and spotted a tree. He quickly ran to the tree and climbed on its highest branches. Golu did not know what to do. Suddenly, an idea struck him. He lay down on the ground and held his breath. The bat came near him, smelled him, and thought he was dead. He slowly walked away. Molu climbed down the tree and went to Golu. I saw the bear whispering something in your ears, friend. What did it say? Well, he warned me and asked me to stay away from selfish people like you. Molu hung his head in shame. Golu continued. But you are my best friend. This one time I forgive you. Never repeat the same mistake ever again. Both the friends walked away. To err is human, but to forgive is divine.